emergency meeting at Downing Street to try to fix a health service in crisis. The Prime Minister says he's filled with confidence after talking to health bosses, but others say it's too little too late. The NHS was already working at the top of its capacity before the pandemic, and now what has happened is that it has exceeded that capacity. Also this afternoon, after 15 rounds of voting and some tempers frayed, America's House of Representatives finally elects a leader. In the FA Cup, Harry Kane is one step closer to a goal-scoring record after Tottenham beat Portsmouth in the FA Cup. And... The Ukrainians celebrating their first Christmas as refugees. Good afternoon. An emergency meeting of health service bosses has taken place at Downing Street. The Prime Minister brought the leaders of hospital trusts, royal colleges and others together to work out ways to relieve the NHS of some of the pressure it's facing this winter. Not invited were the healthcare unions, who described the meeting as a talking shop that could achieve little. And even inside what Number 10 called the NHS Recovery Forum, there seemed little hope from doctors that any real improvements could be made before the spring. Here's our political reporter, Amy Lewis. Good morning. How bad is the NHS crisis? It is a sign of how serious and widespread the crisis in our healthcare system is that the Prime Minister has called emergency talks at his home over the weekend. Sir so Chris Whitty, government ministers and healthcare bosses were invited to Downing Street, tasked with solving this growing problem. The issues that need to be resolved right now is that the NHS was already working at the top of its capacity before the pandemic. And now what has happened is that it has exceeded that capacity. And how confident are you that today will make any difference? There's not a silver bullet. It's not going to be the case that they're going to come out of today with a grand new plan that is going to solve things in the here and now. You should know we're taking urgent action. Earlier this week, the Prime Minister made the NHS a priority in his New Year's speech, promising to cut long waiting lists. The NHS are working urgently on future plans for A&E and ambulances. But not everyone is convinced. The British Medical Association, who represent all UK doctors, told ITV News, it tells you everything you need to know about this government's approach that the only people not invited to an NHS recovery forum are the NHS workforce. Health experts and clinical staff have been uh, sounding the alarm for years. So it does beg the question why it's taken Rishi Sunak and Steve Barclay so uh, long to listen to them. The NHS is struggling with staff shortages, record-breaking demand, and there are more strikes on the way. The list of challenges facing this government appears to grow by the day. And Amy, this meeting took place with the threat of more strike action hanging over the NHS and across the public services. Yes, there is uh, plenty more threat of strike action, but I suppose if you want to start on a positive note, that would be at least that there is, uh, and there are a lot of talks planned for early next week to try and resolve some of the strikes across some of the sectors. For example, the health secretary is going to be meeting uh, the health unions on Monday. They're going to be discussing pay for some health workers starting from April for that financial year. But what we have been told is that will not stop the strikes uh, that are planned for the coming days and weeks by nurses and by ambulance workers. Now, today is the last Last day of the uh, major railway strikes uh, today of course the RMT member unions are uh, actually on strike but we've been told that uh, the rail unions will be meeting with the government on Monday to try and resolve their dispute and so too there is also talks uh, between postal worker unions too but there's a threat of new strikes at the moment being balloted are teachers in England and Wales uh, and also as well junior doctors so more strikes on the horizon that we haven't seen uh, so far this winter so plenty more challenges ahead for the Prime Minister and his government. Hmm. OK, Amy Lewis in Downing Street. Many thanks. 
In America, the House of Representatives has finally chosen a speaker to lead it after days of deadlock. Republican Kevin McCarthy was elected after failing 14 times to get enough votes and tensions were so high that at one point, one congressman had to be physically restrained as he tried to confront one of his colleagues. From Washington, Robert Moore reports. The next speaker of the 118th Congress, Kevin McCarthy. Holding up the gavel, this was a fleeting moment of triumph for Kevin McCarthy, the pro-Trump Republican from California, who has finally become Speaker of the House of Representatives. But the victory had been achieved at extraordinary political cost, and amid such intense bickering that it seemed at one point that fellow Republicans would come to blows. One congressman had to be physically restrained. The final vote followed 14 consecutive and humiliating ballot defeats for McCarthy, ending days of paralysis. Kevin McCarthy of the state of California, having received a majority of the votes cast, is duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives. But as he was sworn in, it was clear he had won only with major concessions to the conspiracy theorists and radicals on the right of the party. In fact, at one point during the voting, a congresswoman had Donald Trump on the line. Such is the former president's influence over this wing of the party, his initials visible as the caller ID on her mobile phone. This has already been dubbed the Chaos Congress, and the vote all came down to the ultra-Trump loyalist Matt Gates. He had been involved in frantic negotiations over multiple days. Two years ago to the day, insurrectionists had stormed this very office. Now Kevin McCarthy moves into the immensely powerful position of the speakership, second in line to the presidency, and American politics may have entered an even more turbulent era. Robert Moore, ITV News, Washington. And elsewhere in the United States, a six-year-old boy is in custody after allegedly shooting a teacher. It happened at a primary school in the state of Virginia. The teacher's injuries were described as life-threatening. Police say the shooting was not an accident. Essex police say they are incredibly concerned for the welfare of a vulnerable pensioner, Timothy Hatcher, who's been missing for almost three weeks. The 69-year-old suffers from dementia. A man has been arrested on suspicion of kidnap. And an Italian man has admitted to stealing over a thousand unpublished manuscripts, some by really famous authors. Unpublished works by Margaret Atwood and Ian McEwan were among the works reportedly targeted by Filippo Bernardini. Now, the cost of living crisis is having an effect on just about everyone, but research shows parents who need childcare are being hit particularly badly. The UK already has the joint highest childcare costs in the developed world, according to the OECD, and now a nursery chain has revealed the results of a survey showing the costs are forcing parents and grandparents to turn down work or resign from their jobs. Sejal Carrier has more. What letters? Back. Single parent Claire is feeling the financial strain of soaring childcare costs amid a cost of living crisis. To work full time, she was paying £1,900 a month to send her son Arthur to nursery. Still struggling to make ends meet, she went part time. I've basically subsidised my salary with my savings. Government subsidy for my nursery is now paying for my food inflation and my gas bill. I can't imagine it going up much further. If it does, we'll probably have to move back in with my parents. A survey of a thousand parents of under fives found two thirds have turned down work because of a lack of childcare. One in four grandparents are retiring early to pick up the childcare slack. And 67% of parents have considered leaving their jobs because of the pressure of juggling childcare. This problem affects all families. It particularly affects families on lower incomes because as a proportion of their income, lower income families pay the most for childcare. But also for high income earners, they get locked out of the benefit system. So they continue to pay, pay these really extortionate prices. You're such a clever girl. 
Among those is Lindsay and her family. She works part-time and her husband is classed as a high earner. But after little Mia's nursery costs, there's little left over at the end of the month. By the time you take your mortgage and your childcare and your bills, it's probably about three and a half thousand pounds to spend them before, before, we even, well, that, before we even start living for the month. Like so many parents, Lindsay feels stuck in a catch-22, where she can't afford to work, yet she can't afford not to. Sejal Karia, ITV News. To sport now and in the FA Cup third round, Harry Kane scored again for Spurs as they made it through to round four at the expense of Portsmouth. And another Premier League club, Leicester City, also squeezed through against League Two strugglers Gillingham. Chris Scudder was watching. A day for the underdogs when the small clubs go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big boys. And he puts a good save out of the keeper. A wet and windy day, anything was possible. Gillingham in the blue here were potential giant killers against Premier League Leicester City, bottom of the entire football league and with the worst goal-scoring record of the lot. Backed by a big crowd, they tried everything. It's a good hit, but why? but just couldn't find the net. You knew what was coming. Leicester, not exactly flying themselves, needed just one chance. And the chance comes to Inacho! To squeeze through by a single goal. In a Tottenham shirt today. Spurs faced a potential banana skin at home to Portsmouth, two divisions below them. And for a while, the League One club held on. But Harry Kane hasn't looked back since missing his World Cup penalty for England. He hasn't stopped scoring since his Qatar heartbreak, and this one was enough to put Spurs into the next round. Chris Scudder, ITV News. Finally, you may well have just taken down your Christmas tree, but in the Eastern Orthodox Church today is Christmas Day, and so thousands of Ukrainians who found sanctuary in Britain have been attending services across the country. The celebration is tinged with sadness, of course. Nearly 11 months since the Russian invasion, this is their first Christmas as refugees. Sam Holder has been speaking to some of them. May God bless Europe with peace and calm and victory for Ukraine very soon. There are a thousand new faces at this Ukrainian church in London. Many have fled the violence. Others coming for the first time, driven by pride and solidarity with their homeland. Despite multiple masses to cater to demand, the congregation 20 deep outside. Father Vitali and his family left when the missiles rained down. This Christmas, we hope that the war will finish very soon and we will all come back together to Ukraine. We know that the situation there is very dire, but the resilience of the people of Ukraine, I think, also gives us the hope and the courage to continue on here. Across the UK, like here in Durham, Ukrainians proudly wearing their national uniform. My two sons are in Ukraine, and um, half of my heart is here, but half of my heart is in Ukraine. Most Ukrainians celebrate Christmas today, the 25th of December, according to the Eastern Julian calendar. It's the same date used by the Russian Orthodox Church, but this year, in a historic act of defiance, one of Ukraine's biggest churches allowed services to be held on the same date as Western countries. The Russian Orthodox Church has supported the invasion. Its leaders have close ties to President Putin. But as ever, the people of Ukraine are refusing to stay at home. In Kiev, the churches are packed, and there is hope that next Christmas, the war will be over. Sam Holder, ITV News. And that is it for now. I'll be back with the late news at quarter past ten. Until then, enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.